Hello, planet Earth and beyond. Do you like pie? How about octopi? How about killer octopi? Stay tuned on Talk is Cheap. We're going to talk about one found at the South Pole. to another edition of Talk is Cheap. My name is Pete Hobleib. Glad to have you. To my immediate right, we've got... Dan Holfeld. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's it going, Dano? Pretty damn well. Good, good. I like your coat. Is that a new one? This, actually, you've had for quite a little while now, oh, a couple just, months. I'm just not that observant, I guess. I like it. Looks good. I look pretty professional. I yeah, I, and it fits you well, I must say. Well. And here's a stranger down on the end taking Dusty's place. How's it going, yeah, sir? Yeah, it's been a while. Oh. Andrew Hofeld back here. It has been a while. Business. I want to thank you. We just The last episode that you were on is the uh, Paulding Light, and if it wasn't for you, that show would have never happened. Uh, so that was a good one. It was very I fun. Wanted I wanted to do on scene, and finally got to it. And I think we need to do more. Yeah. Do you have any other ideas? Or well, we got to do his Bigfoot one. Yeah, that's yeah, we got to get out to, <laughs> yeah, get out to yeah. the. I'm the, looking forward to that the back one. forty and get out there. Uh, I think about that. We we, were t- we talked about it a lot last summer. Just never got around. Well, the to planning's it. all up to you, Pete. So. Uh, <laughs> come next, on, I said we this summer. Make it happen. <laughs> yep. <Yeah>, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we like to film in warm weather, so we're not going like this. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, for for those that uh, may not know, in Wisconsin right now, it's winter and very cold. So in the planning stages for our summer excursions. And yeah, uh, you know, uh, for those that join us regularly, uh, typically uh, Dusty joins us. Um, again, uh, Dan's got him on a special mission. Uh, yeah, don't say nothing. But uh, hopefully he'll come back and have some great uh, stuff to talk about. And that's all I'm going to say about it. I'm not going to talk anymore about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, we happen to mention... Uh, we Oh, before we get started. Oh, yes. Go for it. I got another announcement. So what I want to do is have more interaction from you guys. And I thought the best way to do that was have a call-in number. But I didn't really know how to do it. And someone said... Like, we were talking about calling people and not using our number because we want to be anonymous. Mm -hmm. But I tried to use this number. This is Google Voice. I tried to use it. I practiced. There's way too much delay, so it's not going to work well for that. But I will use it for a call-in messaging service. So if you guys want to interact on the show, you can call this number. It's 256-510-5234. That's 256-510-K2D4. And now this is an Alabama number, so if you're going to have long-distance charges if you're calling from probably a landline. I think a cell phone, you're all right, not paying long-distance. Check your carrier's plan before you do that. <laughs> but, yeah, leave a topic, say hi, and if it's a topic suggestion, I won't play it until the topic is presented. But if you don't want it on air, just say so, but I'm not going to guarantee that I'm going to air every message. Just take take that into account. Try to keep it to a minute or less. We don't need going on and on and on. A a huge dissertation on every message. So yeah, I plan to play these, you know, for beginning of the show, just to get more interaction. I think it'll be fun. We had one call already, so let's play it. All right. (laughs) This ought to be interesting. Yo, yo. It's the animal (laughs) film talk is cheap. People, please leave your messages, your comments, your questions, your concerns, your complaining, whatever you want to do. This is a talk is cheap hotline. And we're here to give you a voice. That guy was charged That's long it. distance. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds real enthusiastic. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah, and you know, you made a good point. You know, drop your hot tips in here, and yeah. uh, you know, if you want to complain, go for it. And yeah, uh, these shows. So I'm um, the cat's out of the bag. We film shows about three shows at a crack. So if you leave a message now on this first episode, I'm. It's not gonna. If I have something to air, it's not gonna air until probably a month from now. So just. It might be coming, but like I said, I'm not going to guarantee that I'm going to play every message. Again, 256-510-5234. That's 256-510-K2D4. All right, Pete, back to you. All right, that was cool. I'm going to start calling in, I think, and just, yeah, wow, just, to, <laughs> just to have some fun with the new number. Um, 
Well, before we get into the topic um, that that uh, I'm going to discuss today, I want to just kind of interject here. We talked about Bigfoot already. Um, there's a, an internet forum that I, I frequent. Uh, there's multiple ones, but the one that I really like and go to a lot is uh, called the Bigfoot Forums. And one of their uh, members, uh, Midnight Owl, posted a couple photos of an alleged Sasquatch face. And... The story goes that um, in April of 2011, uh, this uh, forum member, Midnight Owl, um, was out doing some research, uh, scouting, if you will, uh, hoping to interact with some Bigfoot, and found himself uh, surrounded by several subjects. He had a small uh, video camera and inadvertently snapped about a half dozen photos in the dark now, mind you. So kind of just turning around. Uh, so he heard something and he's just like. Yeah, yeah, taking taking some photos. That's the way I understand it. Or Do we he, know what camera it was? Uh, it was an RCA Small Wonder video camera. <laughs> okay, so nothing too professional. Yeah, nothing great, <laughs> nothing, you know, uh, out there. And, you know, this is... Uh, <laughs> this is, you know, like, a, for lack of a better term, like, you know, a citizen scientist, you know, he's a, a Bigfoot enthusiast as well, who's actually doing something about the phenomena and getting out there and trying to get some good evidence, um, and much more than I've been doing as of late. I've really slacked on that. But anyway, I thought these uh, two photos were, it's the same photo, but one's like the contrast is adjusted in the brightness, etc. But... I, I, when I first saw it, I'm like, what am I looking at? And then I'm like, oh, wow, this is really cool. So I wanted to share it with you guys real quick. First photo here we have is kind of the, uh, okay, there we go. Learning how to run this thing. <laughs> this first photo here uh, is a cropped photo, and it's a close-up. And what we're looking at here is kind of a Bigfoot head that is peering through some foliage, some leaves, and stuff like that. So there's a leaf identified that's kind of obscuring it a little bit, and then the face. Um, we'll go back to this, but here's the one with the brightness and the contrast adjusted a little bit. Ooh. I thought that was pretty cool. You can you can see here we've got a, a mouth, got a couple couple nostrils here and a nose going up into a pretty pronounced uh, brow ridge here, you know, with the eyebrows uh, coming over. And then here you've got the leaf that's kind of obscuring it a little bit. Um, thought that was pretty cool. Now, obviously, I don't know Midnight Owl personally at all, uh, but I know that they're an active member um, and uh, a real advocate uh, and proponent for Bigfoot. So I wanted just to, to share this a little bit. You can go over to the Bigfoot Forums, uh, www.bigfootforums.com, and look at the enhanced photo topic if you want to kind of pick up the conversation. You can ask, the, ask questions there. Um, and pretty cool I, I thought this was some of the better evidence coming out recently so what's all the stuff on the other side of it here is that is he actually like behind a tree do we yeah know? he's in like bushes and trees so that's leaves and foliage and brush in front of him Man. did he go back and take any pictures of like <clears throat> what it looked like during the day yeah, you know I, good uh, idea. I didn't ask that question yeah. uh in the in the particular thread i was looking at it it didn't uh show any photos like that but um, you know, I could ask. We could go actually uh, when the show's done. Re when we're done recording the show, we can go online and post the question. And yeah, if uh, if the individual's out there, I said I think I said he. I'm not sure if it's a he or a she. But uh, I mean, if it was at night, it's probably going to be exactly hard to pinpoint the exact same spot. Yeah. but it'd give you kind of an idea. Yeah. Huh. Or I could just go and take a photo of the woods outside and say, "Yeah, this is it." Oh, you know, yeah. yeah, that's all yeah, right. But, uh, <laughs> but I thought that's that was true. That's yeah. true. <laughs> You know, we would never know. This, but is, I, this is a leaf right here. <laughs> yep. And yeah, it could be somebody dressed up and, and pulling a prank. Uh, it could be, but you know, like I said, as far as Bigfoot evidence goes, recently I thought this one, uh, once it was enhanced, was you know, if pretty you good. were at there and you were seeing something like that, wouldn't you just go? <laughs> yeah. Um, I would probably do that. I, I think everybody reacts a little differently, um, and it's easy to say, well, I would just do this or I would do that, but when when you come face to face with a seven or eight foot tall hairy creature that's not supposed to exist, um, oh, yeah. all bets are off. If it was that dark, you wouldn't have saw anything. So yeah, he, he saw did. it after the fact. He looked at the pictures. Yeah, and yep. And, and that's yeah, what, what, made him, what made him snap randomly. He heard something. Yeah, heard, just, yeah. must have heard something or had the, the presence. He felt that there were several subjects around him. So he, That's the thing. You're using your sixth sense. That's when you can kind of feel that something's around you. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yeah, some excellent questions. I'll be sure to ask them. So anyway, okay. Little That was just a little Bigfoot teaser for us here. What I want to talk about next is a creature called Organism 46B. Now, this is your topic, right? Yes, this is my topic. Somebody along the line 
suggested this topic to me, and I can't remember if it was one of the viewers that did it. Oh, or so it's not your topic. <laughs> well, it's not one that I necessarily just came across okay. myself. Because it never came up on our feed, so I would have known. Okay, okay, yep. So it must, must have, have been, been a conversation person. that I had just on the street or with everyone. Somebody said that, because I was for the life of me trying to remember where I came up with the idea. I'm not that original, you know, so. Um, but I came, anyway, I decided I was going to look into this. Um, what What is Organism 46, uh, 46B? It's a killer giant squid that can hypnotize its prey and paralyze humans and assuming other things at a distance of 150 feet using poisonous venom. Okay? It has 14 legs over 30 feet long, and it has shape-shifting capabilities. Ooh. Okay? A little reptilian DNA there for you. Yeah, so the story... <laughs> yeah, right? So the... Um, Story comes out that a doctor by the name of Anton Padalka, Russian scientist who was on an expedition uh, to Antarctica, South Pole, uh, for the Russian government, he and his team was drilling into a lake called Lake Vostok. Okay, and for those of us that want to take a look here, there's the South Pole, Antarctica, and there's Lake Vostok. Their discovery of this was then quickly covered up by the Russian government, you know, very similar how the um, U.S. US works. Yeah, <laughs> U.S. works as well. Unfortunately. When, yes, when, when, they, when they do stuff like that. Um, so first off, uh, it was uh, allegedly in 2012, um, in this particular expedition when it occurred. The New York Times did report in, in February of 2012 that sci- Russian scientists have actually accomplished drilling to a freshwater lake the size of Lake Ontario, that's a pretty big lake, after spending a decade drilling through more than two miles of solid ice. So the Russian wow. government spent 10 years drilling into this lake. Did well, they ever figure out what the rate of drilling Oh, no, I was? didn't. I suppose you could calculate it in making some general assumptions. Well, you what know? exactly were they looking for to R- begin with? Right? Yeah. It was scientific. And, mm-hmm. and you know what? I totally blew my intro to this topic because when we talk about Antarctica, okay, we talk about secret bases, right? Mm. Uh, you know, government and or alien. We've talked about maps showing that it's been ice-free with its own type of vegetation and animals. Um, we talked about how it's the entrance into the hollow earth. Uh, that was uh, by, what was the Bird, guy? right? Bird, wasn't it? Admiral Bird. Bird. Bird, Bird, yeah, Admiral Bird. Yeah. Bird. God, it's so hard to keep all this stuff I know it is. People right? are yelling at us for not knowing Yeah, yeah I know people yell at us all the time. Um, but it is tough to keep it straight. Uh, is, okay, now, now we might have just made another mistake there because it was Admiral Bird on Operation High Jump. Correct. Which was different, or the, that was a different one than the guy that was flying, or was that, I forget to. Anyway, we got the, They were both the same. Okay, that was the same because, you know, Operation High Jump is when the U.S. government sent, like, a Navy fleet down there that got into... Uh, battle with, battle German with the, with UFOs. the you know, UFOs, yeah. right? So we've got some crazy crap coming out of Antarctica. That's my point here. Here's a new one, Organism 46B, and what do you know? The Russians are tied to it. Okay, so this was reported on in 2012 in the New York Times. So, uh, so far we've we've got... We put the Russians there in the general time frame, right? Here's here's an interesting thing. Um, this particular article said that the, the lake had been covered, ice covered for at least 15 million years. Additional kind of articles I came across reference anywhere from 14 million years to over 20 million years. So anything in this freshwater lake has been literally cut off from the surface for 15 million me- wow. years or more. Okay. And they know this by ice core samples. Yeah, yep, yeah, and taking the samples and things like that. So that's assuming that... Antarctica wasn't ice free, you know, a few thousand years ago. Anyway, so we can go to, we can uh, really tire. Did you ever in see? The, you, I see you got this picture. Did you ever see the video where it shows them making that Antarctica base? It's like really old. It's like 1980s, and it's like there's they show this big thing carving out a f- <laughs> carving out a <laughs> thing in this snowblower. <laughs> it's a snowblower thing. I just realized what you did and there. And then it's making a, like underground tunnels Yeah, and stuff. yeah, I saw some photos, yeah, and it had like just basically big rooms almost cut yeah. out and, and tunnels in there. Yeah, I, saw, I believe I, I've seen the photos. So for the through. longest time they want to deny that there wasn't bases. There's video there. Yeah, that, pictures. Sh- that shows that they're doing stuff down there. So here's the research station. Uh, looks like they just uh, drug a double wide out there and, and uh, threw a heater in it. And that was from uh, Live Science. So <laughs> Keeping it cheap. Yeah, keeping it cheap. 
<laughs> what made him pick that exact spot, though? That's a hell of a pole to get that all the way in. Almost, They're almost in the middle of the dam. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. How Did they have a radar to figure yeah. out? Uh, oh, how the lake was or, discovered is pretty interesting. was discovered by air. Uh, I'm going to just guess in the 50s or something, someone was doing flying over it, and they noticed that the top of Antarctica, which had all of this like terrain and ups and downs, there was a huge flat area um, kind of like uh, in the shape of what he thought was a lake. So mm-hmm. they did some investigating to determine that there was a lake under it because of the way the, the surface was mm. much flatter than the surrounding terrain. Yeah, that's so good. that's the biggest lake on Antarctica? Or I just, believe so, that, yeah. or that we know of, yeah. right? It's one of the biggest ones, uh, if not the biggest. Um, so anyway, they drilled down in 2012 and broke through and th- sent, sent divers down in there into the lake to check it out which has its own huge logistical questions and challenges. and and uh, uh, They sent divers how down. Hell? How far? <laughs> well, through two miles in the oh, ice. Oh, they freezing down yeah. there? <laughs> so, okay, so you're, you're kind of That's getting... That's a big, big ice yeah, box. So there's some, yeah, there's some logistics <laughs> involved as well as uh, when you... Allegedly, uh, when you get down into the lake... The water then, due to pressure, goes up through the tube and then refreezes, and that prevents contamination. So how would you really get divers down there? That's one of the debunking talking points. But it's Russia, man. They can, they can do some crazy things. Um, so anyway, they sent a team of divers down here and ultimately came, came into contact with this creature that was the demise of two of the, the scientists. So when you say they're down, are we in... Water is this still ice? Nope. They go down and they went through two miles of ice into the freshwater lake below. Could you imagine how, how cold that water is? Yeah. How do they not freeze before they get down there? Down like, there. That doesn't even sound right. Well, yeah, you can, right. You could get by on that, but when you hit that water, yeah. No, well, I mean, like, yeah, the divers and, like. Well, the, the water itself is only a few degrees below freezing, and the reason why it's below freezing is the pressure it's under from the ice above. It doesn't freeze at thirty-two okay. degrees, but it's like it's only probably like. You know, 28 degree water. It's not really that much colder. Okay. Because it's not ice, right? Yeah, I suppose you could have a thermal suit on or yeah, something. Yeah, they, they do Antarctic, uh, you know, cold water diving all the time. So it's possible to have the equipment to get into the water. Um, I do, did they do it? And who knows? So. I do cold showers once in a while. Let me tell you. <laughs> it wakes you up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, so here's what. This doctor, Anton Padalka, says um, it disabled their radio, which we later learned to their alarm was intentional. Somehow they cut the communications between the divers down below and surface and all that. They witnessed it paralyze prey from a distance of 150 feet by releasing its venom into the water. Its prey, in this case, was one of their divers. One of his friends was killed this way. One of the scientific... Uh, the scientists was was killed this way. It used its arms to tear off its head and then pop the remains in its mouth. So it was a, as if it had hypnotized them telepathically. Well, it released venom apparently in the water that basically paralyzed you and put you in a state and um, came up and ate you. Wow. Uh, Thirty three foot long and it both. Here's the shape shifting thing. When they were approaching it in the water. It shift, shape shifted into the shape of an of a human diver. So it saw them coming at it, and it sh- went into the shape of a human diver, mimicking them. That's insane. Yeah. Another article that I read uh, claimed it had also shape shifted into a school of fish. So you want to talk about good camouflage? You know, imagine if you're a shark and you're coming up to this squid, and all of a sudden it shape shifts into the shape of a shark. You're like, okay, it's just one of one of my buddies. I'm gonna leave him alone or whatever. So, pretty crazy. So when you say he's, it's shape shifts into a school of fish, though, then you're talking about breaking, more, yeah, breaking apart. Not necessarily because you know, or um, is it just a projection that it's? Well, octopus and squids, or more, I'll say octopus more, I think, than squids. They're known to be able to like become almost transparent or take the exact shape of their their environment that they're in or color of the environment they're in. So it probably would just make it the, the transparent part was just the color of the water. And then it had its certain sections that were in the shape of various fish or, mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, but hold that thought because I've got some cool video we'll watch uh, 
a little bit later. Right. This uh, fine doctor also claimed that another one of his colleagues was killed after they had eventually they were uh, eventually tried to capture it, and in the battle cut off one of its tentacles. Well, later that night, the tentacle crawled back up through the two mile hole and went and killed one of the one of the people that were attacking it. Supposedly, the person that cut off its its tentacle, that tentacle went and killed okay, that person. Okay, so now I know why you brought this up on the show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now it makes perfect sense. Okay. Oh, hell no. But, but it's also shown that octopus, they don't have, like, say, a central brain. Their entire body is made up of a series of neurons. So their whole body is their brain. And it's been documented that octopus, you can cut off one of its tentacles, and it will collect food and bring it back to the mouth of the main body. Wow. That's crazy. Okay, so it kind of plays into that, too. Yeah. So, huh. um, so you know, you have this really far-fetched story, but when you start looking at what we know about octopuses right now, which are one of the most like alien creatures that we have on the planet, it's, it's kind of those skills really blown up into this kind of conspiratorial uh, level. So it was a five-day battle, okay? And... What's crazy is that this expedition in 2012 corresponded with reports of that this team went radio silent for six days. And there was all these articles across the world wondering what, what happened with this team of scientists. And after like six days, it came up, no, they were fine. They just had technical difficulties, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. So again, disabled their radio communication. It was published in, in major news outlets that this Russian team went radio silent for six days and everybody was wondering what happened. Did they die? Were they packing up and getting out because of weather? Stuff like that. Right. Well, it came out, oh no, they're back on, everything's fine. Okay? So again, there's that cover-up piece. Mm. And this Dr. Padalka uh, fled Russia um, after he learned that Vladimir Putin was going to weaponize this. You've got a freshwater squid that is very aggressive, can paralyze prey, ultimate camouflage. The thought was you could lay thousands of eggs of this octopus or uh, of this octopus or squid or whatever the heck it is and release it into our lakes and rivers and of all your enemies, of all your freshwater sources and um, wipe them out. Yeah, imagine anybody anywhere near water would be done for. So um, allegedly, that's why Dr. Padalka fled. Now, f full disclosure, I cannot find any Dr. Anton uh, Padalka, any sort of publications or anything like that uh, on, online. Um, can't find it. There are Anton Padalkas, though. There's a handful of them on Facebook. Um, none of them look like a <laughs> Russian scientist that did his fled. research. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, and, other than that, uh, the only reference I can find of Dr. Patalka is in stories um, that talk about Organism yeah. 46 He could have had his background wiped, too. So right. There's always that. Mm -hmm. So um, we talked a little bit, as, we, as I kind of described what this uh, octopus could do and stuff, I did want to point out, you know, that a 33-foot octopus or squid, I'm going to just use the terms interchangeably because we're not sure what really what we got. Um, here's one that was taken by, uh, there we go. This one was taken off of a uh, oil rig camera at 7,800 feet uh, by shell. Whoa. <laughs> it's like alienish. Yeah, right? Those tentacles. And look at how long that is. And this one is supposedly, you know, 30-something feet as well, super long. Oh, my God. That would be so scary. And look at how he's just hanging out there. That and one doesn't the, look like the tentacles would do anything, though. They're just they kind of like... They probably sting you or wrap you oh, up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I think they're for sex. Oh, hell sex. no. <laughs> they almost look so thin, like you could almost rip them apart. Yeah. Yeah, so it's pretty interesting, though. Well, um, it's like jellyfish. Those things are pretty thin, yeah. but they'll sting. have a good they'll sting. They'll mess you up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm sure. Uh, Dano, can you bring up the next video, please? We talked about octopus camouflage here. And this one was really cool too. I wanted to show you what they're what they're really you capable of. You can really of. understand how Here. octopus would stand out very easily okay, there if you plant. couldn't use your camouflage, use your skin to change color and texture. Here's some algae in the foreground. And an octopus. Whoa! <laughs> you just proved Isn't the that point. Isn't that amazing? You just proved the point. Now Roger and, and watch, they're going to they're they're gonna do a replay here of this. Yeah. This so is f***ing crazy. Oh, uh, I did it. Get as big as I can get. That big brown makes his eye spot very big. 
So he's bluffing. Let's do it backwards. I thought he was this joking when he first showed it to me. I thought it was all graphics. So here, here it is in reverse. Watch the skin color. Watch the skin texture. Just an amazing animal. Can change Look color and texture to match the surroundings. Too. Watch them blend right into this algae. One, two, oh three. my God. Forget about it. <laughs> yeah. How do you even know? Pattern, color, brightness, texture. So am I. Thank you and much. the texture, too. See how he can sp like, spike out his yeah. stuff? Oh. Isn't that nuts? That'd be so, okay. so freaking scary. And, and now we talked about shape shifting, okay? <laughs> so, yeah, you proved the point there. And uh, so now we've got the shape shifting. And here's another octopus. I want to start it at about 35 seconds here. Okay, and check this out. Octopus. The mimic octopus makes itself look like a living, moving animal. So it pulls all its arms around behind its body and swims along like a poisonous flatfish called a banded sole. In other cases, if it's getting attacked, it puts six arms down a hole and raises the other two arms to look like a poisonous sea snake that has bands along oh my its body. God. If that's not enough, it'll swim along looking like a poisonous lionfish with these banded arms looking like the banded spines that come off these very deadly fish okay so isn't uh, it crazy what what these uh, animals can do no. i know right <laughs> so that proves to me that the ocean scares the hell out of me man i don't want to go in the water again <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, so everybody was saying, oh, we don't even know if there's life forms in the lake. You know, we don't know what we're going to find down there. So they did take water samples and spend some time. And now, mind you, we're six years later, okay? And I came across um, uh, some findings after they did some analysis. And what's cool is that there's a suggestions that the, the life forms may be formed based on chemicals in the rock versus sunlight, because we, we often think that sunlight is needed for life. And, uh, of course, you know, you get down to the bottom of the ocean where sunlight doesn't penetrate. They're finding life. And so now they're saying, well, wait a minute. They, life can be formed now in the absence of sunlight based on chemical reactions and stuff. After some testing, they found Lake Vostok, thousands of unique gene sequences of life. Um, I've got a couple here and they've got 3,369 unique gene sequences with 1,500 of them classified taxonomically. So main, to, the way I look at that is that they've discovered 3,300 unique sequences, but only could identify about half of them. Huh. And uh, albeit they're all like very small, you know, microbial size and stuff, but um, it was a small sample. So we know we have life here. We know we have life that we haven't discovered or known about before living here. Who's to say in 15 million years there couldn't be some really crazy stuff growing on oh, there? Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, and I made a mention about them going uh, six days missing. Um, Fox News reported um, in 2012, in February, we're missing these scientists for six days. They lost contact. So I did spend a little time saying, okay, this one, I found it hard to believe, too, be, just because of the not a lot of different news sources really re reported on that. Not a lot of websites had a lot on it. So what I found uh, very shortly after the, this, um, the, the mainstream story of this group of scientists that went missing for six days down in Antarctica, uh, C. Michael Forsyth, um, he's a fiction author had on his website a story that kind of described this and uh, i did want to point out it's on forsythstories.com you can check it out six months afterwards when you check out his site he's kind of uh likes to embellish and write and stuff but you be the judge i find it pretty interesting as this is a pretty easy way to cop it out and say oh it's debunked but the original story and maybe like snoops yeah Snopes. yeah Snopes. yeah <laughs> and uh yeah, oh, just because you said it, you know, it's true. But, uh, you know, this guy here, um, you know, it would be a really easy way to say, point to him and say, look, it's a hoax. Or it would be, you know, really easy to have him write something or just find this and say, look, you know, you know, this is, uh, this is where the whole new story came from. But maybe Forsyth did his homework. I don't huh. know. But what was being described is not that... Hard to believe. Yeah. Well, but it said they captured it, though. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention that. They captured the damn thing. <laughs> so that that part I don't really believe. Yeah. How would you get that up that hole? Yeah. Or one, if it's attacking you down there. 
Yep. You're going to have a hard time getting that in the, what it did I say it was in, like some sort of... Yeah, large tank. Yeah. Yep, I, I skipped over that. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, they did capture it, and they took it to Russia, and that's when Vladimir wanted to weaponize it, and that's that's what made Dr. Padalka run off and tell his story. Hmm. Wow. So, yeah, um, pretty interesting. It was a five-day battle. <clears throat> Five days. Yeah, that's why they lost <laughs> radio contact. <laughs> so, anyway, um, you know what? Folks out there, if you can find any additional information, please post some links in the comments because it was it was fun to tell the story. I'm not sold on it, but yeah. I did th- think it was pretty cool to take an opportunity to at least educate some folks about how cool octopi are and what, <laughs> what they can do and some cool squid, yeah. squid stuff. That's uh, probably why they capitalized on that story. They're like, oh, we could come up with something awesome here. <laughs> yeah, right. Yep. So, real quick, does this... Michael Forsyth. Forsyth, yeah. Forsyth, does he have something to get paid for doing his writing? Well, let's check out his website. That's always a good question now oh. that we did the uh, Brian Forrester stuff. Right. Okay, so Other. Oh, he's got 1,200 people following him. He came from Yale. He wrote at the Weekly World News before he did this. If we're, but I, you know, I bet you there's uh, some stories that the Weekly World News has broke that have been true. I don't think we've ever found Bat Boy. I think that was a Weekly World <laughs> News, right? But anyway, here's Maybe the. He wrote it. Yeah. Batman. So this is what people are pointing to: um, that the Express grabbed this story, tweaked it, and released it like four yeah. or five years later. I mean, it's just hard to believe that something could live down there. You know, that large, and what are they eating? That, yeah, and, like yeah. If they didn't see anything else. But it is interesting, though. It is. Gets you thinking a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Now that you showed that video, it's oh, it may, it can yeah. make more sense. Yep. And yeah, Octopi are, are uh, very smart as well. So, anyway, be, uh, you decide. But I would be really interested if somebody had any more information, share it. So, thanks for joining us. And uh, remember, cheap is talk, and talk is cheap. Have a good one. Long distance calls, maybe. Yeah. <laughs>